Today I'm going to talk to you about the G-alpha-Q mechanism, which involves G-protein coupled receptors. These receptors are metabotropic, meaning that they use neurotransmitters as a ligand. The purpose of this mechanism is in order to activate phospholipase C. So before we get into details of how this mechanism works, let's look at the components here that I've drawn to the left. First, we have this yellow protein, which is an integral membrane protein. This is a receptor protein, and in particular, this receptor protein is alpha-1. G proteins are heterotrimeric, meaning that they have three subunits. As you can see here, this purple is the alpha subunit, green is the beta subunit, and blue is your gamma subunit. And lastly, here in orange, we have our effector protein, and this effector protein, in our case, for this G-alpha-Q mechanism, is phospholipase C. So let's get into the details of how this mechanism begins. First, you need to remember that this is a metabotropic mechanism, meaning that a neurotransmitter is going to bind as a ligand. So first, we are going to have epinephrine come in and bind to our alpha-1 receptor. Here is our epinephrine binding to the alpha-1 receptor, and this results in a conformational change within this receptor. And this conformational change is what leads to our next step. Initially, the alpha subunit is bound to GDP. When the alpha subunit is bound to GDP, the alpha subunit is inactive. So what's going to happen is the alpha subunit is going to exchange GDP for GTP and therefore become active. Once active, the alpha subunit will dissociate from the beta and gamma subunits of the G protein. Once it dissociates, the alpha subunit will bind to our effector protein, which in this case is phospholipase C. Once the alpha subunit is bound to phospholipase C, phospholipase C becomes active. And when this occurs, it sets off a chain of events, so let's get into the details of those. The purpose of phospholipase C, also known as PLC, is to hydrolyze phosphatidyl inositol biphosphate. This results in the production of diacyl glycerol, also known as DAG, and inositol triphosphate, also known as IP3. These in turn set off different effects in the cell. DAG will activate protein kinase C. Protein kinase C will in turn phosphorylate different proteins within the cell and the phosphorylation of these proteins results in intracellular events. IP3 acts in different ways in the cell. It can bind to the endoplasmic reticulum. If it binds to the endoplasmic reticulum, it will result in the release of calcium from that smooth endoplasmic reticulum in the cardiac muscle, the IP3 will bind to a specific receptor called ranidine, and these receptors are located on the, that's the SR, the sarcoplasmic reticulum, and this in turn will result in an increase in calcium within the cardiac muscle cell, and this increase in calcium will allow an increase in the number of heart contractions as well as cardiac output. And thus, you can see the importance of the G-alpha-Q mechanism.